Election Systems and Software Presents Operating the DS200 on Election Day Step 1. Plug it in and lock it down. Access the back panel of the DS200. Using the flat key, unlock the back panel of the DS200. Lock the silver bar into place. This step is critical because it opens the door that allows ballots to pass from the scanner to the ballot bin. If this step is not performed, a ballot jam will occur. Pull the power cord from its storage area. The power cord must be on top of the silver bar, not under it. Ensure the power cord is plugged securely into the power adapter, black box, strapped into the bin. Plug the power cord into an approved power strip surge protector, then plug the power strip surge protector into a 110 volt electric outlet. Position the DS200 as it will be utilized during election day, then lock the front wheels. Step 2. Open the ballot bin and clear the auxiliary bin. Using the flat key, open the bottom storage area of the DS200 box and remove the blue ballot bin. Unlock the blue ballot bin and remove any contents. Shut the flaps of the ballot bin and slide it back into the bottom storage area of the ballot box. After the blue ballot bin is back in the ballot box, reopen the flaps of the blue ballot bin. This step is critical to allow scanned ballots to be deposited into the ballot bin. If this step is missed, ballot jams may occur. Lock the door to the bottom storage area. Using the flat key, unlock the auxiliary bin. Open the bin and ensure nothing is in the bin. The silver shutter of the bin should remain in the closed position during normal operation of the DS200. Step 3. Open and start the DS200. Using the flat key, unlock the lid of the ballot box. Undo both latches and open the ballot box lid. Using the barrel key, unlock the DS200 display and raise it to the open position. If the DS200 has electricity, it will automatically start upon opening the display. If the DS200 does not start, close the DS200 display, recheck all of the power connections, then reopen the display. If the DS200 still does not start when raising the display after rechecking the power connections, contact your election office. Upon a successful boot up, the DS200 configuration report will print. When the report has finished printing, the open poll screen will appear. If the public count has a number other than zero prior to scanning any ballots, contact your election office before opening the poll. If the public count is zero and you are ready to begin accepting voted ballots, click the open poll button on the screen. The ballot status accounting and zero totals reports will print. If the reports fail to print or you require other copies, push the report options button and select the report you wish to print. If you are ready to permit voters to cast their ballots, press the go to voting mode button. Step 4. Scanning ballots and express vote cards. Ballots can be scanned from any lengthwise orientation, right side up, upside down, top first, or bottom first. If the DS200 detects an overvote, undervote, or blank ballot, the voter can be notified with the option of returning the uncounted ballot or casting the ballot as is. 
The DS200 also scans Express Vote cards. As with ballots, the Express Vote cards can be fed into the DS200 in any lengthwise orientation. Express Vote cards should be fed into the DS200 using the Express Vote card guide to ensure the card is fed properly. Once a vote ballot or Express Vote card is counted, it will be deposited in the ballot bin. The public count total increases by one and the voter will see notification of successful casting of the ballot. The system is ready for the next voter. Step 5. Utilizing the Auxiliary Bin If the DS200 should stop functioning, the Auxiliary Bin can be opened to accept voters marked ballots for processing at a later time. To open the Auxiliary Bin, first unlock the bin with the flat key. Once the door is open, the shutter door of the Auxiliary Bin can be flipped down to allow insertion of marked ballots. Ballots inserted into the Auxiliary Bin have not been counted and need to be processed according to your jurisdiction's laws once the DS200 is functioning normally. Step 6. Closing the DS200 at the end of Election Day. Open the auxiliary bin using the flat key and ensure there are not any ballots in the tray. If there are not any ballots in the tray, close and lock the auxiliary bin door. If there are ballots in the tray, follow your jurisdiction's procedures for processing uncounted ballots. After all voted ballots have been processed, unlock and open the media access panel using the barrel key. Press the close poll button inside of the media access panel. When you press the close polls button, it will turn red. When it turns off, release the button. After a few seconds, the close polls screen will appear. If you are certain that all voted ballots have been counted, push the close poll button. The system will automatically print the ballot status accounting report and the results report. After the reports have printed, the finished screen will appear. Press the finished turn off button to shut down the machine. If your jurisdiction requires you to remove the USB stick from the media access panel, you must wait until the machine has completely powered down before removing the stick. Removing the USB stick prior to the system powering down may damage the machine or USB stick. After the machine has completely powered down, whether or not you have removed the USB stick, close and lock the media access panel. Close and lock the DS200 display. Close, latch, and lock the DS200 ballot box lid. Clear the auxiliary bin one final time. Unlock the bottom storage area and remove the blue ballot bin. Lock the blue ballot bin with all of the voted ballots inside. Close and lock the bottom storage area. Unplug the machine, wrap and store the power cord. Then lock the back panel. Return the blue ballot bin, USB stick, and all printed reports in accordance with your jurisdiction's laws. Congratulations, you have finished operating the DS200 on Election Day.